Thunderbird Nation, welcome to the Thunderbird Thunderbirds Coaches Show. Of course, head coach Tracy Sanders with me, and we'll talk about all the latest with SUU women's basketball. But first, we'll hear from Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. Warehouse, Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen is a proud sponsor of SUU Athletics and has great food, craft cocktails, and is always showing your favorite sports and UFC fights. Warehouse will be hosting a super party on February 12th for the big game. Head over to your local sports bar for prices, food specials, and more. Warehouse would like to remind everyone to have fun and always drink responsibly. Coach, a lot has happened since the last time out. The women are now 6-0 and in WAC play. Word's starting to get around campus a little bit. Just tell us, you know, how big is it being 6-0 and in conference play? I think it's we're excited about where we're at. You know, it's um, just trying to take it. Honestly, I, I was laughing uh, with some friends over the weekend. I was out recruiting, and I said, we don't even take it one game at a time right now. We're taking it, like, five minutes at a time yeah. and really just trying to focus on, you know, winning the first five minutes of the next game and getting prepared. Um, but I, I'm just really proud of them. You know, we've figured out how to – grind through some wins and at the end of the day you know they're wins and we're going to take them and I still think we have a lot to improve on and I still think we haven't played our best basketball yet so that's exciting too I think there's a lot ahead um exciting to have Tamika Whitman back and she was able to play some some minutes there the last game and I think we're going to continue to see some good things from her moving forward too a little uh little segue Tamika back last game Mm -hmm. against Utah Tech how big is it to have a player of her caliber back on the back on the court? It's huge. I think for us, it's just, you know, we've really gotten through some things without a lot of depth. Um, so to be able to have another player um, like her that, that can be in there and start taking some minutes, and I think she's going to just continue to increase those minutes as she's feeling better. But she's such a great presence on the defensive end. You know, she brings great energy. She loves to play defense, and so I think she kind of rallies everyone around her too. Um, And then, you know, she helps change the tempo of the game, too. So she brings a lot of good stuff for us, Um, obviously having the experience that she's had, too, and, you know, being an upperclassman that's played and played well. And so um, it's just going to be nice to continue to have her moving forward. Yeah, I was, you know, down in St. George uh, uh, covering the game, and then all of a sudden, probably midway through the first or second, I see, you know, number two, Tamika, standing (laughs) up, walking over the scores table. I'm like, she's back in like she's back you know and just a great sight to see you know 2021 big sky defense player of the year um talk to uh uh, talk to us about like her defensive presence and just how big that is yeah I think the the great thing about her is you know she has the size where she can defend on the perimeter she can defend in the post and so really you can just throw her on the other team's best player um she's strong she's physical she doesn't mind contact uh, she moves her feet laterally so well. You know, she stays in front of people. And, um, you know, I think initially, she, uh, I, I forget what game it was. She play, I think it was uh, Santa Barbara. She came in for a couple minutes. And you can just tell she's kind of like this caged animal that just <laughs> wants to be let free. And so um, she got into a little bit of foul trouble just because I think she was so eager and hungry to be out there. And so I thought she did a way better job um, down at Utah Tech. And, you know, those first couple minutes kind of getting her out there. And she's pretty limited right now. So we kind of had to be resourceful in how we used her. But I thought the second time she came in in the second half, she brought some really good stuff and kind of helped us spark that run that we went on in the fourth quarter. So I just think she's going to continue to to really help yeah. us. Yeah, Tamika hit a huge three-pointer mm-hmm. to give the Thunderbirds a huge advantage late mm-hmm. in the fourth, and it was just smooth sailing from there. And speaking of Utah Tech, just give us, you know, a couple of thoughts on the last couple of games, you know, Last time on the show, you guys just got back from being Seattle U, Mm -hmm. and then you had UVU here at home, Sam Houston at home, and then Utah Tech on the road. Just give us your thoughts over those past couple of games. Well, I think Utah Tech, you're playing a team for the second time around, which is always a challenge. You know, what are they going to do? It's it's fun to sit around the office and try to guess, okay, what adjustments are they going to make? You know, what are we going to try to do? I always laugh that basketball is a game of chess. You know, you try to do something, and then – coaches make adjustments and then okay now we have to you know go to our next plan and so that's one of the things I love about it but I thought you know we um 
I thought Lizzie was huge for us. You know, Lizzie Williamson, I, you know, she just cleaned up the boards, especially that second half and um, played really well. And one of the things that we've talked about, you know, every time I've been in here is the length and the size that we have. And so we have to continue to use that to our advantage if it's getting the ball inside and dominating the boards, getting second chance opportunities. And so I think that really has helped us. You know, one of the things with our schedule so far is that we've had our two buys already. So now moving forward, we have our two games you know, a week here um, looking ahead. And so that's going to be, you know, challenging too, is like the, the quick turnarounds and being mindful of rest and keeping our bodies healthy and that type of thing. So we tried to give them, we gave them Friday off after Utah Tech and took a little shooting on Saturday, Sunday off. So hopefully we're feeling good for this week. But I think moving forward, you know, that's got to be something too that we take into consideration and trying to just stay fresh and healthy. Yeah. Lizzie, you know, speaking of Lizzie Williamson, 20 points, 18 mm-hmm. rebounds at Utah Tech, you know, her seventh double-double of the season. And, it, yeah, I t- couldn't agree more. It's a huge, huge part because the last couple of games she got in foul trouble really mm-hmm. early and was limited minutes throughout. And, you know, Megan and Ashley, of course, stepped up in those big games. Um, just describe a little bit more on how, you know, how important and how good it is to have two six five centers in the six three center who it, also played previously in the WAC right. and Megan it, Jensen. It really is. And I think they're playing well together. You know, they do a lot of we do a lot of posts and guards and so the posts spend time passing with each other and playing against each other, playing with each other. And so I think that's where, you know, you're seeing Ashley continue to get better and take advantage of her minutes as she gets to go up against a Lizzie and a Meg every day. Um and same with, you know, all really there's only four of them right now you throw Briar in there too and I think it's the same thing and and they're all a little bit different and they all complement each other you know Lizzie's really long her and Ashley are the same size but Lizzie's really long Mm -hmm. and you know I think Ashley does some things that Lizzie can't do and so they really kind of all complement each other and it's it's pretty fun to see because you get a little bit of something different when each one comes in um Meg, I think, is playing really well. She's continuing to play well. And, you know, she stretches the floor out a little bit because she can shoot the three at the post position. And she still has that length where we can throw it inside. So it's really a great mix of different post players down there. So it's fun to see them, you know, play with each other, play in different lineups and um, and then defend. You know, we're, we're so long. We're changing shots, blocking shots. Um, Ashley had some huge blocks in the last couple of games. Lizzie's had some huge blocks. So... And then same thing on the perimeter. You know, you have Sharita, Sam. We have some longer Tamika yeah. out there, some longer guards. And so I think it helps us contest shots and adjust shots. Yeah. Speaking of defense, uh, how big uh, against Utah Tech was that 17-2 to fourth quarter mm-hmm. run you guys had? It was huge. I mean, I think that was the game changer, honestly. And, uh, you know, I was just kind of talking with you guys before we went on air, but I – I felt comfortable the whole game, like, okay, we're going to figure this out, you know, we're going to be okay. Um, And then I think we just flipped a switch, you know, and there's excitement in that, but there's also frustration, like, why can't we do that sooner? You know, uh, we are a great defensive team when we decide that we want to do it. Um, So how do we get to them to sustain that for a longer period of time and understand, you know, we can't, one of the things we talked about after the game is like, we can't be like this every game, grinding yeah. out a win, you know, at at the end deciding we want to turn it up or whatever it is. And so we have to figure out how to s- sustain that over a longer period of time. But I was proud of them and how we played that fourth quarter because I think they really decided they wanted to win. You know, we talked about making history and, um, you know, the 6-0 start is since we went Division One is the best start in conference history here. So... There's a, there was a lot of things on the line, and we try not to play too much in, into that, you know, looking at the standings and the net rankings and all that stuff. You know, I think this is where we really just have to focus on one game at a time. We can't look a fa- too far ahead. We can't look at the next game. We can't look at, you know, try to make predictions. We need to just show up for the next game. Yeah, and with the team being 6-0, and oh, um, how do you keep the girls in the right mindset? You know, because some teams, when they, you know, get on that big of a running conference play, mm-hmm. you know, it gets, oh, this game's going to be easy. This game's going to mm-hmm. be, you know, and then all of a sudden they end up losing that game or just not performing right. How do you keep the girls in just that straightforward mindset of, you know, today's game day, yeah. let's go out and take care of business? Right. Well, I think, uh, what, is the, what is the quote uh, Jay said before our last couple games was that, pressure is a privilege you know and so we've earned this pressure 
Um, and we have to understand that everybody now wants to be the team that gives you your first loss in yeah. conference. And so in the locker room, you know, we have a target and we've circled, ha- made the circle bigger with every team that we've won. And that's the target on your back. You know, the target's getting bigger with every game that you win. And everybody wants to be the team that knocks you off. So I think we have to have that mindset too. It doesn't matter who we're playing, where they are in the standings, you know, how good we think they are, they aren't, whatever. Um, you know, you see it every time you check the scoreboard. Anyone can beat anyone on exactly. any night, and yeah. that's what we try to remind them of. And so we have to make sure we show up and don't take anyone lightly. Yeah. And speaking of, like, the tar- the target and being 6-0, and mm-hmm. this week you have GCU and then Tarleton at home this weekend. What are you expecting from Grand Canyon? Yeah, uh, a lot of pressure. You know, we just actually finished watching some film on them as a staff, and, you know, we know they're going to pressure us. We we know they're going to press. They're going to trap. You know, they rely a lot on their defense to produce their offense, and so we have to be able to handle that pressure, um, you know, be strong with the ball. Um, if you do those things, you're coming to the ball, you're strong with the ball, you're handling the pressure, then we should be getting to the free throw line. You know, we're turning that pressure into hopefully fouls and taking advantage there, but I think that's going to be the biggest thing is um, – you know, spreading the floor out, making traps long, recoveries long, things like that, and just having good spacing and um, handling pressure and then not playing an ugly game, you know, yeah. not letting us get speed up, um, understanding what our strengths are, you know, still getting the ball inside, using our length and all those different things. So they're a great team. Um, you know, they, they play really well. She's a great coach. She does good things. It's going to be a tough atmosphere. You know, they have a great crowd there which is always fun. It's always fun to play in front of a crowd. And so I think we just have to be ready and excited to go. Yeah. And now moving on to Tarleton Mm -hmm. here at home this weekend. Also, um, what are you expecting from Tarleton? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. I think they're coming in here and, you know, playing in Cedar City. And so I think they're going to be excited to be here, excited to be a team that has, you know, the ability to come here. But again, like for me, I'm not – I'm focused on Grand Canyon. You know, we haven't looked that far ahead. Um, So that's kind of the scout we're going through right now and and where we're we're preparing for. But I just, you know, I think we have to just assume we're going to get everybody's best game at this point. Absolutely. And especially, you know, any team can win on any night. Mm -hmm. Um, Our last couple games, you know, UVU, Sam Houston, and, you know, Utah Tech, all of them have played very scrappy at times. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you adjust your game plan, when, you know, when they start getting, you know, more physical in the paint and just playing at a high tempo? Yeah, I think it's just staying composed. You know, I think that's kind of the goal sometimes with some teams is to speed you up, to make it ugly, um, to get you out of what you want to do. So I think a lot of it is just being composed. You know, sometimes you got to call time out and just take a deep breath. And um, I, I like, I'm a huge fan of like, trying to let them figure it out a little bit um, and playing through it and I think we have good leadership and so I think you know we have upperclassmen we have people that have been here and done that and so I think you know there has to be that composure and coming together when things get hard and um, you know talking as a group and deciding hey we need to get a stop or you know we need to execute right here and get something good and so I, I think we're putting that pressure on them to figure that out has hopefully helped create some leadership and that they can kind of do it on their own. But I think that's the biggest thing is like, we know there's going to be teams that are going to try to make it ugly. Um, and we just have to figure out how to play through it and, you know, stay composed. Yeah. Speaking of experience, uh, like you mentioned, how big is it just to have, you know, girls like Sharita and Mm -hmm. Lizzie and, you know, Dela, Sam, Mm -hmm. just all these very experienced players, you know, how is that key in, uh, to a very important, important play in in WAC conference play yeah I think it's a big piece of our success you know I think they all bring something different too you know we have you know some high IQ players we have some um high energy players we we have a lot of different things that each one brings and so I think they complement each other and I think for the most part they're all on the same page you know they understand uh they respect each other when they get in there and they're talking to each other. And so I think that's huge too. You know, we have a great core group that's, that's been around the block and they've been here. And, um, you know, we tease Sharita because she's so old, you know, <laughs> like, and she teases herself cause she's so old, but it's just nice having that experience yeah. for sure. Speaking of Sharita, you know, she went 16 of 16 at the free line mm-hmm. for Sam Houston, you know, you know, that's just incredible performance right there. 
and also, you know, first year in the WAC, what, you know, different aspects have you seen from, you know, switching from the big sky? I think it's, um, I would say it's a more up-tempo conference. I think there are, like, we've seen a lot more pressure um, pressing than we, than we did in the big sky. So I think being able to handle that, and, and I think, too, you know, you get comfortable you have, we had some great coaches in the big sky and I think you get comfortable with your scout, you know, the coaches kind of keep the same scout. And so you kind of know what every team's going to yeah. do after a couple yeah. years. And so I think this is all kind of new and figuring it out. Um, you know, we've obviously played Grand Canyon in the past. We've played UVU. So we played a few of these teams, but I think that's kind of fun and refreshing too. It's like, you have to really like go through and break everything down and critique it. Whereas when you've played a team a couple years in a row, same coach, doing the same stuff, you can, you know, you really like, oh yeah, I know that one. Or, yeah. oh yeah. I think with these guys, it's like, okay, we're, we're really co- going through it with a comb and, um, you know, trying to figure out everything and little tendencies and stuff like that. And personnel is huge. You know, we do a lot with personnel and so understanding different players and, and what their tendencies are and, um, being able to guard them. Yeah. And speaking of like scout team and, you know, just facing new teams, mm-hmm. you know, Face Sam Houston for the first time, one against them, facing, I believe you're facing Tarleton for the first time mm-hmm. in program history this weekend. You know, how big is it just for, you know, just to do film right, to, you know, get everything right with scout team to make sure that, you know, you can just, you know, know their move before they're even going to do anything on the right. court? Um, the scout team's huge. You know, a lot of times it's actually my coaching staff. We have some practice guys. Um, you know, sometimes we'll move players back and forth, but I do think it's huge. We watch a lot of film. So, you know, we'll watch film today. They have their scouting reports. We'll watch film tomorrow. We'll watch film before shoot around. So we put the film up so that they can go watch it on their own. You know, we have a lot of girls that, you know, watch games, you know, they'll go sit down and just watch games on their own, which I think is great. But you know, for, like, for example, GCU, we're going to prepare by one of the things we talked about was putting extra people on the floor. So it's going to be five against six because we know they're going to trap. We know they're going to pressure. They're going to be all over the place. So we're going to try to simulate it even harder than it's going to be in, you know, when we go play them. And I think, you know, we have a great group that of scout players and coaches or whatever that, um, can play their roles and I think that's important and you know sometimes I joke because I'm usually under the basket watching and I'll be like she's not going to do that you know <laughs> Abbott's move is way tougher than you're going to see or uh, whatever it is you know Jay's way more physical or well, Haley's a great shooter so there's all these different things so we try to make it harder than what they're actually going to see yeah. yeah you know you know I've you know seen a couple of the uh, practices you know mm-hmm. just sing with friends and yeah you know avid jay and Haley, they can all definitely ball <laughs> yeah. out for sure um you know just being you know six and zero in conference play you know what is the end goal at the end of the season right now from this point yeah i think you know the big picture is for us to be playing our best basketball at the end you know obviously finishing in the top four so you have a first game by i think will be huge we can't really, I feel like at this point, you know, all we can c- control is what we can control. Yeah. And that's what we talk about too. We can't, you know, we can't control some of these other teams winning, losing in other games. So we just have to take care of our own business and how it plays out at the end is how it plays out. But I do think for us, it's like not looking too far ahead and just taking it, you know, like I said, first five minutes of the next game is like the most important thing and setting the tone. So we want to be in a good position at the end of the at the end of this conference season, but we want to also be playing our best. So we need to make sure we are working to get better after every single game. Yeah, especially with the whack and you know totally different structure. Mm-hmm. Usually, it's just conference standings. Right. You know, you can go on ESPN, NCAA, just any you know college basketball page and look up standings, right. and you see oh SU is first. Right, right now, for seeing we're technically second. Mm-hmm. CNF is first. Just, you know, speak on how important, you know, those net rankings are and the seeding rankings are at very important stages at, at the end of the season. Yeah, it's a tough thing. I mean, and I think there's a lot of different opinions on it right now, and it's a little bit early to speak on it. But, you know, our, our preseason was done when we were told that, you know, this was what they were going to go to. And so we didn't have flexibility to change, to schedule yeah. more wins or whatever. We, we played a really, really tough non-conference. And going back, if I had known how it was going to be, you know, maybe I would have changed it. I don't know. But I also think those 
those tough games have helped us in conference play. And so it's just a little bit unfortunate that, you know, it's, it is the way it is. I mean, Stephen, Stephen F. Austin is so far ahead right now. Like it, it's, it's going to take a lot for them to, to fall from, mm-hmm. I think the top. And so, you know, we're, we're, like I said, we're just going to take care of our business and um, do the best we can to, to stay where we are. And, um, you know, hopefully that shows people some things if we can continue to win and be successful. Yeah, you know, like the song "Taking Care of Business." Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Any shout outs, Coach? Oh man, I not really. I'm. We have had a great home crowd, and I know Thunder Crew has been working their tails off mm-hmm. to get people in, in the stands. And um, you know, I, I, we passed out some jerseys last home game. We're going to continue to do that with some throwback jerseys that we have. So just love having the fans there. We get a great group, and I, uh, you know, they. Don't ever underestimate how much they mean to us. So mm-hmm. just appreciate all the support. So you mentioned throwback jerseys. Are we going to see a new uh, jersey combination maybe, maybe. for soon on the court? Yeah, maybe. Nice. That's that's the word. I haven't seen them yet. I stay out of that. <laughs> so we'll see. Just come February, I hear. We'll see. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. I think that's all for today here on the Thunderbirds Coaches Show for Tracy Sanders. I'm Anthony Colasuno. That's a wrap. Thank you.